Hey, what's up, wizard? So I got a product to show you today that's definitely gotten a lot of hype. And today we'll be taking an in-depth look at the antimatter scope switch. So let's take a look at it together and see if this is the new, like most tactical thing ever, or if it's just like, you know, the new shake weight. All right, let's get to it. So before I get too crazy into all my thoughts on the scope switch, I wanna say a big thanks to AAC Ammo. They did supply all the ammo that you see in all the range testing that we do today. So big thanks to them and it all worked really great. There was no stoppages, no malfunctions, no issues whatsoever. And it's really like the third or fourth video I've tested exclusively with AAC Ammo. So at this point, yeah, it's a thumbs up for me. All right, now let's get serious on the scope switch. So this thing was like, wildly hyped on like Instagram and social media, it kind of blew up out of nowhere. So what the heck is the antimatter scope switch? The scope switch works with a slider and a combination of their mount to give you the ability to change the magnification by moving the handguard slider forward or back, functionally allowing you to rapidly change your magnification while keeping your grip on the firearm. And there's no, is nobody noticing how changing the magnification is also making me change my form though? That's not good. And, and really, this just looks like, I mean, I mean, you, you know what this looks like, right? I am extremely concerned on how your form would constantly be changing as you manipulate the magnification. I have seen some other reviewers move the magnification then put their hand back in like their normal handguard position. And I'm gonna purposely not change my grip on the actual magnification lever because if I did that, then it's really like the exact same speed of just using a throw lever. But tell you what, let's get into it and then later on we'll test some different forms and do some other stuff out on the range. For now though, let's talk, who the heck is Antimatter anyway? Antimatter is the same company that brought you the Flux Raider and the Snake Staff Systems Everyday Tourniquet. Looking at this though, none of the pages actually contain anything about the business or who they are. It's kind of odd that the same company is actually three different companies that all have the same free WordPress website template. It's just a little weird, and I think they want to share some information about who they are to their, you know, their customer base. I don't know, just a wild thought though. I'm putting this thing away though. Oh, on that note though, I do want to warn you that the client experience buying something off of the three different yet completely same company websites, like all three of them, the experience is yeah, it's pretty awful. You also have to battle with all the bots swooping in and buying up all these items and then inflating the cost. So then you as the consumer are likely paying double for a lot of these products also. And I'll tell you what, I'll just end my mini rant there. I'll just tell you right now that their whole business model really confuses me. But I've really kind of avoided reviewing any of their products thus far because just getting any of the products, like that whole experience of just having to buy one, was so bad that I really couldn't recommend that to anyone. So if you are trying to buy something, good luck to you with that horrible time. Tell you what though, let's see if the whole experience gets better once we try to put it all together on the rifle. So let's go into the actual scope switch installation now. Thankfully, Antimatter has a pretty good video on this that you can watch and follow along. Now, why it has the weird bird watching music my grandpa would enjoy, I, I don't exactly understand. It's, it's very hipster and listening to that music while you're trying to route all these cables and do all these things, well, it makes for a, a very interesting experience. And I say interesting because that's a nice way of saying it's a bad experience without being mean. No, it's not mean, I said it was interesting. Oh, they do say you may not be able to figure this out and you could possibly need a gunsmith to help you install this, but it's really just pulleys on a cable on a sliding grip. And I'm not entirely sure how that has anything to do with the gunsmith. It's not like there's some sort of core gunsmithing curriculum on how to set your gun up for like magnification hand jobs. Anyway though, you mount the optic like normal and they actually do a pretty impressive job of teaching you how to torque each item down and how to set your eye relief. They also do a great job in telling you how to level your optic and how to torque all the various bits down. Now I will say, they tell you to tighten down the top screws, like the ones on the top of the scope mount, down to 15 inch pounds. Now I will tell you, I review a lot of optics and when I get told that, I usually don't do that little. Yeah, I know, blasphemy. 
I do a little bit more, but you do you, I'm, I'm not your mom. If you do 15 on those top scope rings though, I will tell you, you're very likely to have fun later. It's happened to me a bunch of times. Now though, you gotta install the hand job grip, and this involves learning where you wanna have your hand placed for proper stroking of your hand guard. They actually explain it well in the video, but you need to remove all of your front attachments so you can insert the other side of the grip and assemble it properly. And at this point, I'm like, wait a minute. All this stuff is exposed and on these like teeny tiny little pulleys. How is it gonna keep from getting all messed up if any dirt gets in there? And you know what I learned? And I think this is one of the really magical parts of the whole thing. It doesn't. Having this whole area open means you're at risk to get all sorts of fun stuff that can flow into the entire moving apparatus and just gum it all up. And if it does eventually get jammed up or just misaligned, like I'll tell you about mine doing in just a second, the whole thing ends up getting bound up to hell until you take almost every single piece completely apart again. It's a masterpiece of durability. Now on mine, I had gotten this scope switch secondhand, so the distance of the cables weren't exactly perfect. This meant the left side cable was initially loose enough to slip under the pulley and jam into the space between the housing and the pulley, grinding the cable all to hell and just jamming everything up. Oh, and it just kept happening. And every time it got jammed up, I'd have to take the whole thing apart again. Now though, I do want to take the blame. That's my fault for initially setting it up wrong. I want to say that I did that. I didn't follow the instructions. That is my fault. But what I found really interesting, I got kind of a glimpse into what happens when it fails. And when it fails, it fails catastrophically. Anyway though, let's just move on and ignore all that for now, I suppose. Okay, so once you have the hand job stop set up, you run the cables underneath the scope mount. Oh, wait, you gotta tighten down the scope ring first with the world's smallest screws too. Make sure to lock tight these or they will absolutely come loose. Again, now I experienced some of this. If any of this comes loose, you have a complete disaster. You have so many like spacers and rings and cables all over the place that you can't even get to the magnification to adjust it if you had to. You guys, uh, you didn't throw in my throw lever, did you? I'm gonna need it. Now, as I mentioned, you also have to use shims to install the scope ring as the magnification ring varies on different size optics. I didn't have the correct one, so I figured I'd go online and order the shim kit. And to add that sweet icing to the customer experience, they got a lovely $12 flat shipping. And paying 25 bucks to jack off my gun properly didn't seem very smart. So I stole a shim from my trigger cam and smashed it down into position. And no, I didn't use Loctite on my screws, but if you wanna have full like happy hand cycles with you and your weapon system, you definitely need to install Loctite. Okay, once you have this installed though, next you bring the cables around and connect them into the scope ring. Make sure the scope ring is set in the nine o'clock position when you do this or it will absolutely not work. Now, here's another part that really sucks for the consumer, but you don't realize it till like <laughs> way later. After routing all the cables, you cut the excess of the cable off so you don't have this cable mess spinning all over when you change the magnification. And here's the sucky part is, you're very likely to need new cables every time you change the optic that you're using with your scope switch. As each platform and optic will have very slightly different measurements, magnification ring diameters, and different eye boxes. So with that variation, you'll likely need new cables because the ones you're currently using could just be too short and then not work anymore. And that means you need to spend another $35 for some replacement cables. And hey, Thanks, $12 flat shipping, we really appreciate you. And you may think you're gonna maybe avoid this by keeping the cables loose, but if you have the cables loose, you have the issue like I had, where the loose cables themselves can then jump the pulley and slip in alongside and then just completely destroy themselves. But good Lord, with our cables installed, it's finally complete and I'm glad you got to be part of that fun. Tell you what though, let's actually try it out here and see if it actually functions. This is a great moment to like take a second and tell you how I feel about it. Now that I've gotten some time to like really try it out, I hate it. And let me show you why. I already have to give up my angled grip for this mushroom beater. And this upsets me because I use my front hand to add rearward pressure into the pocket of my shoulder. 
And let me explain this. The angled grip and rearward pressure makes it easy to aim and provides additional recoil control to the entire weapon system. Now though, I've done something odd and exchanged recoil control for like maximum stroking capability. If I push the rifle into my shoulder, now my magnification changes. That's confusing. Why would I want that? So instead, I have to have this ladylike grip on the firearm so I don't accidentally zoom in on everything. And then when I do zoom in, my whole form changes and now I'm all compact like I'm straight out of a movie from 1991. Like, let me explain to you how bad this is because right now I'm at max magnification, like a full 8X, but I'm then at like this collapsed shooting form. So I'm zoomed all the way in and have this collapsed shooting form where I actually have less control of the firearm. And I'm not confused in any way as to what this is going to do. I'm going to lose accuracy as I increase magnification, the literal opposite of what I want. Here I am trying to shoot standing unsupported with this thing. Here I'll take some shots at 300 and zoom all the way in. And let's all watch me miss and bounce all over the place with that horrible, horrible collapsed form. I tell you what, it was super fun to like zoom in and out rapidly while I was missing though. I don't know. I heard one of the viewers tell me that maybe you gotta like, you gotta like pump it. Like maybe you gotta like give it some pumps to really charge it up. Nope, nope, still sucks. But I think this is the best part. It gets worse. To lower the magnification, now I have to push outward, which means I need to remove any rearward pressure and instead push outward and away from my body. And if it looks like it's awkward and kind of a pain to control, well, then good, it's translating perfectly because that's exactly how it feels. And the worst part about this whole thing is that like horrible standing unsupported position I showed you is like the only one that even works remotely well. Here, I'll simulate a barricade with our firearm pushed up against the barricade for support. Now, look at this. I can't change the magnification because it's up in front of me and outside of my barricade position. Just imagine that real life scenario, just like reaching out a window, you know, exposing yourself just so you can change your magnification and give, give your handguard some love. And if I'm being completely honest, I'm just struggling to understand the problem that this thing's trying to solve. Laziness? Inability to pleasure a man? I don't know, let's keep going. Let's try kneeling. Good Lord, this is horrible. First, my form is all nuts because I'm having to reach way forward just to get to the magnification control. And then when I do change the magnification, my whole kneeling form changes because my arm is moving around like a complete barrel of stupid. Can I be done? I wanna be done. I just don't get what this thing is trying to solve. It's adding just like a ton of failure points and then taking everything that's incredibly simple and making it annoyingly complex. Oh God, prone. Oh, let's go see this mess. So here, I'm doing my best to get into a nice, comfortable prone position. And now look at this. I gotta reach up and jockey with the slider to magnify, but then I gotta push this whole thing forward and out of my shoulder pocket to zoom back out. This just seems like a whole lot of movement that I wouldn't want to be broadcasting out like this right in front of my weapon system. And I know I'm kind of repeating myself, but I'm running into the same thing of, I just don't get who this is for, and I, I certainly don't get the price tag. I do want to say this pretty clearly, though, if you're thinking about purchasing this product. It really only works in standing unsupported, the literal worst possible shooting position, and the one you probably want to avoid at all costs. But if you're using cover in any way, this thing is gonna fight you tooth and nail. And it's so confusing. Like, why do you need to rapidly zoom in? Like, like who's having that problem? If the target is far away, you have time to use your throw lever or your magnification ring to change the magnification. If the target's right up on you, why the f are you zooming in? I don't, I don't understand, but I guess I'm gonna show some shooting footage now because I'm just a glutton for punishment. Starting with prone, this was pretty unsubstantial. I set the scope to the max zoom before I laid down and shot like normal. This is expected because you normally wouldn't be moving your zoom in and out like you had ADD. Hitting targets at range was the normal easy stuff as I just didn't touch anything. Moving to the flat range though, kneeling super duper sucked. You basically cannot change the magnification because it means your arms are moving and it makes your form do all sorts of stupid things. 
The accuracy here when moving from one to six was somewhere between god-awful and laughable. It would have been easier to be shooting from a boat. And then we can do everybody's favorite shooting form. I mean, Instagram's favorite shooting form, standing unsupported. Here, everything works fine unless I try to change anything. Moving the slider changes my form to look like I'm Steven Seagal with no idea of what I'm doing whatsoever. And I lose any real control over the firearm. So I have increased magnification, but decreased control over the entire system, causing me to lose the ability to rapidly engage the target if I wouldn't have moved my hand. And I tell you what, I've had enough, so I'm gonna do some pros and cons. The first pro I really do, even all the joking aside, wanna tip my hat toward the innovation that was used to design this product, making something we've never seen before. The scope switch brings a completely new concept of magnification control at the front of the firearm, meaning the users can keep all hands on the weapon system to change magnification and still stay on target. And that's the idea anyway, and I think it's really the only pro this thing's got. Oh, actually, wait, the, the instructions are pretty good, but the weirdo vibe music makes me wanna buy a turtleneck for some reason. Now though, let's get into the real bits. And the first con is that you have no consistency in your form if you're jockeying at all with a little slider or whatever. Every time you move the magnification, your form changes and it changes dramatically. So any consistency you have in your ability to shoot is lost for adding in a functionality that is niche at best. And like, I was trying to shoot at close targets and I'm all over the place because I have my hand like this up against the magwell. And imagine being like this, <laughs> zoomed in. All right, the next con, and we did a pretty good job about talking about this, but every position besides like standing unsupported is ah, it's pretty horrible. From kneeling to prone to supported with cover, the scope switch functions in a way to fight directly against you, either giving your position away through a ton of excess movement or just by making a shooting position that changes as your magnification changes, tanking any possible accuracy. It's just really, really great. Uh, I, I do have more cons. And the next one is that it's super duper easy to break. If any of these cables break or screws come loose, everything will just jam up and make the whole system fail to operate. Adding to that problem, the entire top of the system is exposed, meaning dirt and debris can easily clog up the entire apparatus. And when you do have a failure, you have all these cables and rings and spacers all over the place that make changing the magnification just about impossible. I mean, one option is to just keep it in your safe so it's always ready when you need to just zoom in and out of things randomly. Now, before we wrap this up, I do wanna say thanks to my BRN 180 upper for enduring all this hand job training that we did today. And I hate to say that after using this product today at the range, I really can't recommend the antimatter scope switch to you at all. From the customer experience to the price to the overall shooting, I never felt like I was gaining an advantage and instead felt like the entire weapon system was less effective with the scope switch installed. And during most of my shooting, I really felt like I would have been much more effective if I would have just removed this thing entirely. Let me, let me show them something. Hand me the Carmel. So like, seriously, just do this. There, I just saved you like 600 bucks. And the biggest thing I think I've found is that you don't ever wanna be just like, running around and then like just zooming in and out of things. It, it just, I don't know, in practical use, it just made no sense. But I hope this review of the antimatter hand job o matic was useful in your purchasing decisions. I wanna say thanks to all of our Patreon supporters and all of our YouTube members. You guys make it all possible where I have to review ridiculous things like this one. And I, and I super <laughs> duper thank you for it. All right, and I wanna say thanks to everyone that likes, comments, and subscribes. Comment down below what you think about the Animator Scope Switch. I definitely want to hear about it. All right, everyone, watch out. What's that? Jason saw the video and wants to know if we're rooming together at SHOT Show. That's a weird thing to ask.